the blessed name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Indeed, this is another day that the Lord hath made. And we have been commanded to rejoice and to be glad in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We begin now our praise and worship session. But we just want to start off by reminding us from Psalm 117, verses 1 and 2, when it reads thus, O oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise he the Lord. I pray this morning that that will be the anthem of our God of our hearts today to give thanks unto the Lord for all his benefits towards us. Indeed, he is a good God and we stand in his awesome presence to adore, to lift him up, to bless and to magnify his name. We want to take this pleasure and opportunity and welcome you to another Sunday morning worship service. We pray that you will tune your hearts with us to magnify the Lord with us because indeed he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Welcome to Facebook family and friends. Welcome my lights. Praise God and we'll begin by singing. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence because indeed we can't do anything so we invite the presence of the Lord to come and to tabernacle with us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, Holy Spirit.
we will just bow our hearts in reverence to our maker. Father in heaven, we lift you up this morning. Lord, we praise you because of who you are. You are a good God. And Lord, we exalt you this morning because of what you have done as well. You're a good God. So merciful and forgiving Savior, we bow our hearts before you this morning. And Lord, we want to thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. Lord, we ask this morning that you will wash us, that you will cleanse us from all sin. Lord God, and as we are in your house gathered together, Lord, wherever your people are, your word says that there is liberty. And so God, we want to give you a free course of worship this morning. Lord, we want to lift you up in praise and in adoration. But oh God, we ask that you will come and that you will wash our hearts that you will cleanse our minds, that you will center our focus on you. So Father, we give ourselves to you this morning, and we ask Holy Ghost that you will come down, and that you will sit on our worship as we adore you this morning, because you are excellent to be praised, oh God. And so Lord, take joy, our King, in what you hear as we offer a worship unto you. May it be acceptable in your sight, this we ask in no other name, but in the most exalted name of Jesus Christ of the King. Amen, amen, hallelujah.
to lift a special prayer of thanks to the Lord for others. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, indeed you are awesome. Yes, Lord, you are. Indeed, you are magnificent. Yes, Lord, you are. Indeed, you are great. Yes, Lord. I pray.
in Matthew chapter 20, reading from verses 20 to 28. I read while you follow. Then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request, he asked. She replied, in your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in place of honor next to you. One on your right and the other on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? Oh yes, they replied, we are able. Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from the bitter cup. You will indeed drink from my bitter cup. But I have no right to say who will sit on my right or on my left. My father has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. When the ten other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. But Jesus called them together and said, You know that the ruler in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. 28 and last. For even the Son of Man come not to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. There is a portion of God's holy word we honor it by saying, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Before Reverend Williams comes to give the welcome and the notices, I want you to turn your hymnals with me to hymn 36, where we're going to glorify God again in the hymns. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now born above. Hallelujah, thy glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. 
privilege of mothers today, those who are in the sanctuary and those who are watching the broadcast, and those who will tune in later on to the service today. I just want to greet you in the name of Jesus, and today we honor you because indeed you are a mother. We want to express our thanks to you for the work that you have done, for raising a generation, and some of you have raised even two and three different generations. You have nurtured, you have cared, you have extended, you have given up your, your all, and today we acknowledge that indeed you are worthy to be honored. Hallelujah. We want to give God thanks for those mothers who have followed Christ and for those mothers who have helped their children to come to know Christ. And as you celebrate this day, we just want to tell you have a very happy, wonderful day. And may your soul be blessed today by the service. And may the blessings of the Lord continue to be poured out upon you beyond measure. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the house today. And we give God thanks for you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I want to greet you all in the name of Jesus, as I said before. And you know, it's a good feeling to be in the house of the Lord. And today we are celebrating with our mothers. But the service is for all of us today. The service is about God's word that will come to challenge us and to help us in how we live in this world. And so I encourage you to stay tuned and just focus your attention upon the Lord. Focus your attention on the word today because I believe that God has something in store for you. And today we especially want to uh, give out tokens to our mothers who are with us today and for those mothers who are home Yes, I'm sure you're going to wonder how you're going to get your tokens today. But I know that we serve a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. So even if you miss church today, I'm sure the Lord will ensure that you get your token. Because Amen. he's certainly a good God. Hallelujah. So I want to understand. I want to greet the mothers with the singing of this song. And after which we will give you your little tokens. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I remember mama and the love that she gave Kneeling by her bedside, I can still hear mama say The people are depending on you, don't you let them
to another chorus, Minister Monroe will just take the tokens to the mothers and ensure that they are, you know, recognized today. And for the other mothers, they will indeed be favored because the Lord is with you and he will continue to do his best for you. Hallelujah. I thank God, I thank God for Mama too. I thank God for Mama, she taught me how to pray.
the duty of a mother. Even when you're in pain, you're still there. Even when you're not well, you're still going. And I remembered the last Sunday that she was in church. She was in
Greetings again in the precious name of Jesus. And I especially want to acknowledge those who are here today and those who are listening on from social media. We trust that your hearts will be richly blessed. And I just want to greet everyone, our musicians, our moderator, Minister Monroe, and all of God's people who are with us today. We greet you well. Praise God. I want to share on the theme, Greatness in Service. Greatness in service. And the scripture was already read from St. Matthew chapter uh, 25, uh, Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 through 28. And I want to zero in on four of those verses. Praise God. Verse 20 to 24. It says to us, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children, with her sons, worshipping him, and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, He know not what he asked. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, He shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on the right hand and on the left is not mine to give, but it is but it shall be given to them of who is prepared of my father. And when the, the, the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. Shall we bless the Lord? Today, as we look in God's word, we can say that mothers, they are often praying for their children. Mothers are often praying for the out of necessity and sometimes they pray because motherhood is not an easy task and they are, ex they are finding it extremely difficult and so they continue to pray. When no one else seems to be praying, mothers are always praying. When the children seem to be sleeping and, and being relaxed or you know, not even concerned, mothers continue to pray. And we also know that mother's desire is always the best for your children. Most mothers wish the best for their children. In fact, some mothers who pretend that they do not wish the best for their children, when you really assess them, you realize that they desire that their children will be successful, that their children will not lack, that their children will be always be at the top. And so, you know, mothers play that important role. Here we have the scripture showing us the mother of two sons. These sons were James and John. And this mother, she was making a request of Jesus for her son. And this seemed to be a very good thing. And it is something that should be encouraged. And we now need to look at this, this scenario today. And as we honor our mothers, we hope that we also individually will gain some wisdom from the scripture and be able to do what God expects of us. Whether you be mother, whether you be father, or whether you be a children, hallelujah. It doesn't matter what your place is in this scenario. We must do what God expects of us. So as we look at the word today, there are six things that I observe and I want to see what I mean and expand on them. The first thing is that the mother, she came with her sons and she knelt before Jesus. Hallelujah. There are some mothers who, they are just seeking after Jesus, but they are not concerned about their children. Hallelujah. They think that their prayer is enough to keep their children. But here it is a mother who brought her sons to Jesus because she desires something of him. Hallelujah. I realize that her posture was one of worship and she did not just come to worship by herself. She came with her sons because she had a need and she needed the love for her son for their desires to be met today. Hallelujah. And she was very assertive in her action. 
She was very clear in what she was about. No one could wonder what she was about. Hallelujah. This woman was really seeking something from the Lord. The second thing I observe is that she asked Jesus a favor. And this is something that most of us do on a daily basis. We find it so easy to ask of the Lord. Sometimes all our prayers are about supplication. We just continuously ask for what we need of the Lord. And we're always giving very little to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And in light of this request today, we want to consider what this woman's motive was. Because sometimes when we ask of the Lord, sometimes when we fall prostrate before the Lord, our motives are not really right. And so this lady, she could have been worshipping God because she think that she could worship and get whatever she desires. But the kingdom of God is not about that. The kingdom of God is about the will of God. So no matter how much you worship and no matter how much you serve, you can't do this because you are expecting that God must honor your request because you have worshipped. We serve a God who is impartial. We serve a God whose ways are far finding out. And so he do whatever pleases, pleases him. Hallelujah. And so we must ensure that we do not play religious games and expect God to give us something in return. Our motives must be right when we kneel before him to give him praise. It must be coming from a repentant heart. It must be coming from a heart that is broken. A heart that is humble before the living God. Because God desires true worship. And true worship and adoration is only given when we can declare who God is and what he has done in our very lives. And we are certain about it. And we are truthful about it. Hallelujah. The third thing that I observe about this scripture is that this mother, she had big expectations for her son. Yes, this mother sound like some Jamaican mothers. Yes, who believe that your children must be doctors and lawyers. So how will they now pass the same subject? Your desire is that they must come out and they must be doctor and they must be lawyer. And that's a good thing because we must speak things as though they were and declare them over our children. So this mother, she had big expectations. She wants her children to have a special place in the kingdom of God. And this is so good for us as believers. Because some of us, it doesn't seem like we're encouraging our children enough to stay in the will of God. But here it is a mother who brought her children to the Lord, who knelt before him and asked of him because she wants her children to have the best, the best place in Jesus' kingdom. And some mothers, they naturally want to see their children be promoted and be honored. And they want them to be successful and to achieve whatever they did not achieve for themselves. But this desire, it can be very dangerous because you can cause your children to lose sight of God's will for their lives. You see, God may have a different work and a different purpose for the children. One that is not glamorous, one that is not in the spotlight, but yet it is important because everything that God gives to us, every work in the kingdom, everywhere that we are called to serve, it is an important duty. Show us the name of Jesus. And so we're talking about greatness in service. We must give up our best wherever we are. Praise God because God desires and he deserves the best. So parents, we have to make sure that our desires for our children to be advanced, that they are, they are being checked with the will of God. We want to make sure that God's purpose is being fulfilled in our children's life. So if the purpose that we have for our children don't line up with scripture, don't line up with the things of God, we have to think twice. No matter how good it seems to us, we must desire the will of God to be done in our children's life. So sometimes we desire, our desires seem very good, 
but it is not God's will. And so we've got to be praying for the will of God over our children. Praise God, because there are some divine will that God has in store for you, that God has in store for me, that God has in store for your children. But then because we keep coming at him and knocking on his door and demanding what we need, then God allow his permissive will. And sometimes your children will not enjoy the permissive will because this wasn't what God really intended for their lives. So let us desire his divine will today for our individual lives and for our children. And I encourage you, mothers, keep doing that. Give, give God your all and desire the best for your children, but ensure that it lines up with the will of God. The fourth thing I notice about this mother and her sons is that they failed to grasp the teachings of Jesus as he spoke about the reward in Matthew 19 verse 16 to, uh, uh, onwards he spoke about how we can build up treasures in heaven he also spoke about how we can in inherit inter everlasting life and even though these boys would have been in the, in the masters our will and been thought these things they did not really grasp Yes, and the word of God says that many that are first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first. So we must ensure that we do what we are called to do, but let us not worry about our placement, because God knows all things, and he will reward us according to our work. Hallelujah, and he deserves glory today. They did not even grasp the old teaching about eternal life that is captured in Matthew 20, verse 1 through 16. And so they failed to understand the suffering they must face before they can enjoy the glory of God's kingdom. And so Jesus spoke about, spoke to them about the cup. Because he wanted them to know that if you really want special place in my kingdom, you have to be prepared to take the cup that he would have had to take. The cup represents his suffering. The cup represents his crucifixion. And they must be prepared to endure that because that's what the kingdom is about. And so both James and John, they would have faced suffering in their lifetime. I believe that, you know, they, that the request of the mother was honored because they confirmed in their, by their very mouth that they are able to carry out and to carry the cup. And so we realize that James would have, James would have been put to death because of his faith. And John was exiled, which means he was like a deportee. John was banished and he was on the Isles of Patmos. Praise God. And so when you really take the cup of Jesus, there are times when you're not going to have a good end. The end not going to seem good to you. But we know that if we live and we die in Christ, then our end is sure. Our end is a good one because we die in the Lord. Amen. And so today, my mothers, as you listen on, it is very important that you get to know God for yourselves. Because when you know God for yourself, then you can seek his will for your children. Because sometimes his will is not an easy thing. It can come with suffering. It can come with pain. Yes. But you see, when we trust in the Lord, and when we obey our God, he will give us grace to endure. We will be glorified in this house today, mighty God. And we have to continue to guide our children into the paths of righteousness. We're living in a society that is so distracted. Even now, when the children are not able to come to church as they used to, you know, they, 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 they are giving, they, there's an opportunity for the enemy to creep in. And so our eyes must be open even more. We must be vigilant. We must be praying more. We must, be, you know, get them to understand that even though we're in a new season, God has not changed. Amen. He must be served. He must be feared. He must be worshipped because indeed he is our God. Amen. The fifth thing and the penultimate one that I realize from the scripture is that 
that Jesus, he was under the authority of his father. Yes. And so when we talk to our children, we need them to understand that they are under authority. Jesus, he obeyed the will of his father. And that's an example for us as parents. It is an example for the children as well. He could have made this decision about the sons getting special privileges. So God the Father alone makes the decision about leadership and special privileges in heaven. And this reward is not granted as favor. So some of us, we think we can just do what we please and God is going to favor us. It's not like that. The favors and the reward is for those who have maintained their commitment to Jesus in spite of severe trials. And I can say, mothers, you have been through many tribulation. Yes. You have been through persecution. Yes. But thank God you cross over. Yes. And sometimes when you look on, even to your very self, you wonder how being crossed over. It's because God was there with you and you were purposed to be committed to the very end. Yes. Sometimes even your very You have certainly been through your persecution, but now you have crossed over. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so Jesus, he followed the authority. Oh, and we also have a responsibility to pattern this. Because Jesus is our example. And he has already set the path for us to follow today. Amen. We must be subjected to the authority of God. The sixth and final thing that I observe about the scripture this morning is that the other disciples, they were upset with John and James for trying to grab a top position. You can imagine it, brothers and sisters. You will desire the best. You will desire what you think is right for you. But there are those who get upset. There are those who are oh, at you because you are desiring the best. But I challenge you that we as believers, we don't settle for the less. We strive for the best because the word of God tells us that we are the head and not the tail. It doesn't matter if we find ourselves at the tail. We know the will of God is that we must be at the head so we continue to desire the best. And wherever on the spectrum that we are, we serve and do our best. So even if we're at the tail level, we still have function because we know that God is with us. Amen. And we give greatness in our service because he desires that. Amen. Oh my God. Amen. So all the disciples, they wanted to be great because in Matthew 18 verse 1, they challenged Jesus and asked him, who is the greatest? in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. And Jesus led, uh, taught them that the greatness, the greatest person in the kingdom is those who are servant. Those who will serve, yes, and give up their best. Give up themselves to others. And God desires that from us today. Amen. God is desiring those who are ready to work and to give up their best, even in a season when no one else wants to work. Even in a season when people think that they can take a break, God is desiring those who are ready to work. I must work the works of him who sent me while he's there. Because the night cometh when no man can work. Amen. So mothers, what you desire for your children, it may cause others to get upset. But it doesn't mean you're going to change your posture. It doesn't mean that you're going to wish the, the worst now for your children. Continue to wish the best. Continue to pray that the will of God be just poured out upon their lives and be fulfilled in your lifetime. Yes, you want to enjoy you know, the goodness of the Lord and see his favor be poured out upon your children so that you can celebrate the Lord in your lifetime. Well, Amen. Praise Hallelujah. Praise 
children continue to work hard for their well-being. As you invest in them and they succeed, you are going to feel greater joy for your sacrifice, for your service, for the greatness that you have done in your service Amen. to your children. Amen. Hallelujah. We also need to realize that the authority is not given. Uh, we also need to realize that the authority is not given by Jesus. It is given by God. Amen. And this authority today is not for self-importance. It's not for your ambition. It's not for you to gain greater respect. This authority that is given by Jesus, uh, God, it is for useful service in his kingdom. Useful service to his creation. So that's why, mothers, you can do well. Yes. Because God has given you an authority within your home. Yes. Within the scheme of rearing children. Yes. And so as you do it, you are doing useful service. Yes. So continue to give up your best. Continue to serve your children and serve them well and teach them the fear of the Lord. Amen. Bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Amen. And teach them so that they can teach their own children. Amen. So that a cycle of godliness can be permeated in our lives and throughout the generations. Amen. Hallelujah. Closing, mothers. We want to let you know that we give honor to you today. We recognize that you are special to creation. You are special because God has created you for such a time. And though it would seem like some mothers are not meeting the standard, but when we look in, you know, in, in our lifetime, there's no standard of anybody who come and teach you to be mother. So sometimes you just operate in and what comes to your mind that you say, yes, I think this is this. And so, you know, when it comes to grading you as mother, sometimes we grade you very hard, not thinking about your background and your own upbringing, and that's why you do the things that you do. But I want to challenge you that God knows your heart, yes. and God desires to bless you even more, so you continue to serve and serve well. Don't give up in service. Sometimes the children will be disobedient. The children may be wayward, but you continue to remain a praying mother. Bring all your needs to the altar because Jesus is willing and able to help you. So bring all your needs to him. Cast all your cares upon him this morning because he cares for you. Amen. When it seems like financially it is hard and difficult, we still have a God who will never ever fail us. So you continue to press into him and call upon him. I want to give honor to my mother as well. Because she had big dreams for me. I recall when I told her that I'm going to do home economics. My mother was faced was surprised. And she said, I don't like my cooking it up. And I said, Mommy, I'm not doing it because I'm going to cook. I'm doing it because I like it as a subject. And it is, it is considered as a science subject. And in fact, I am stay away from the sciences. So this was a good opportunity to have something to do with the science. Yes. And so I realized that if I was intending to go hook, my mother don't want that for me. So already she showed me her standard. And I know that she had bigger dreams for me. Nothing wrong with you who have cook, but my mother's dream is that I was not cook. Hallelujah! And so I did the subject and I excelled. And what I love more, most about it is the topics about nutrition and how you take care of your body and then the, the science about your body. That is the part that I love even more. Amen. I don't love the heat and the burning up in the oven. And when the place is messy, you get poor grain, even when food tastes good. I don't like that part. But I like when you learn about you know, the vitamins and the minerals and what works best for your body and for it to be nourished and to grow and to function. And so I give God thanks for that. And so my mother, she taught and she supported, she nurtured and she journeyed with me every step of the way. Yes. And that's a, a good mother. And I challenge all mothers to do that. Sometimes as mother, you don't have the education that your children 
children out. And so you take a back seat and let the children come and use their wisdom and their, their intellect upon you and trick their way through. But you have to let them know, listen, even if we don't have the education where you are, I have common sense. And I'm going to use that to govern my house. Amen. To let your children know that you are in charge. God has given you that authority, and yes. you must rear them and rear them well. Yes. And so I give honor to you, mothers, today. And I honor you, all the mothers of Zion. Praise God. Because even in the house of the Lord, there is a place for motherhood. As you birth the new disciples, as you pray and you travail to see that they come into the kingdom. As you pray and travail for those who are here, that they will remain. There is a place for your mothers in Zion. And so I greet you and greet you well. I'm saying, do not give up. Continue to do great service to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because that's what he requires of you. We pray that God's purpose will be fulfilled in your life today and in your children's life. And in everyone's life that is aligned to this church and for everyone who listens on today. Yes. And we pray that the favor of God be multiplied to us in this season. Because in this season there are some who are experiencing greater lack than in other times. Yes. Because of one reason or another. But even in this season we are praying that the favor of God be poured out, be multiplied, be, be Stored upon you today because God is able. Mothers, you are blessed for being in the role of a mother. And today we pray for blessings upon you because indeed you are important in the, 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 in the place of God, in the home. Because Jesus is very concerned about children. And so, as mothers, you are very important in the rearing of children. And so you must deem it as a privilege and an honor that you are a mother. Yes. Sometimes being a mother might feel like an ungrateful thing the way your children treat you. But you must remember that you are honored and you are favored by God. Because when you are in this position, you are called to nurture the heritage of Jesus Christ. You are called to nurture something that is dear to the living God. Amen. And so mothers, you have an important role. Continue to give up your best. Continue to give God your all. Because indeed, he is awesome. He is great. And there is none like him. He is excellent in all his ways. Excellent in all that he does. And I greet you. And I wish you a great day. And many more years of blessing. As you continue to be true mothers and to give God your all. Greetings to all the fathers today. We continue to stand with the mothers and to encourage them and to help them so that they can fulfill their duties. And to all the children, as you honor your mother today, I pray that the Lord's blessing will be poured out upon you. And if you weren't honoring before, remember that the word God, of God says that when you honor your, your mother and father, you shall be blessed. I command you not to live under a life of curse today, but to live under a life of blessing by continuing to give up your best to give your mother what is due to them. God bless you today. Stay in the Lord and be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody lift up a shout of praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Indeed, he's a good God. Yeah. And he has reminded his word through this woman who brought her children to Jesus and to ask him a favor. And so to sum up all, today we learned that this mother, she didn't just bear children, she was a worshiper. Her posture showed her humility and grace before Jesus. We also find out that she's not just a worshiper, but she's also a worker. As she nurtures and brings up her children and her household into the wisdom of God. We 
we also find out that this woman is also a warrior because this woman fights for her children to excel. She fights for them to understand their place and position in this life. That they are children of the Most High God. That they are his heritage. And so being his heritage, they also have to carry on the godly legacy that she has received from her Lord and the Master. Praise God, hallelujah. We give thank God, thanks for you, Reverend William, for the words that the Lord has given you to minister unto his people. We pray that he will continue to bless you and to pour out his everlasting mercies upon you. Praise God, hallelujah. I invite you now to turn with me Hymn number 367, Thou my everlasting portion. And we pray today that as mothers you will pray out to God that all along your life's pilgrim journey, all you want to be is closer drawn unto God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thou
love someone who will begin to believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we pray today as we have just sung that this song too will be the power of your heart. That you will ask God to draw close to you so that you can draw close to him. We invite you to open up your hearts and give your hearts to Jesus because he's the only way through to God. Praise God at this time to do the chorus one more time as we invite Minister Young to come and to pray a special prayer over our mothers. Praise God. Close to thee. Easy. There is so much discomfort at times. I thank 
you, Lord God, for the mothers today. I thank you, Lord God, and I pray that you will bless them, that you will replenish them. I pray that you will provide for them. Those that are in need, I pray that you will provide for them. I pray that you will open doors for them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that those single mothers, that they will not abandon their children, even though they are alone, that they will love their children as you will love the church. Mighty God, I pray for the Christian children that they will be strengthened by your word each day. God, that you will replenish them each day as they go about their business. Lord God, that they will lift their eyes to you, that they will not grow weary and faint hearted. God, so many be a pressure at times that will overtake them, but help them to keep their eyes on you, mighty God. Almighty God, have your way today. Provide for the mothers who are lucky today, I pray. Send help, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless them in abundance, Almighty God. Those that are aspired to the mother, help them, O oh God, not to lose hope. Help them to learn, O oh God, from those that are mothers, that they too will understand the nurture and the care of a child. Almighty God, bless the fathers who stand by their children. I pray, God, at times the fathers are not recognized, but I pray today for the fathers. I pray the fathers who stand by their children that God will sustain them. God, that you will continue to pour out fresh oil upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. God, that they are they stand at the head of the house. Lord God, that you will continue to pour out upon them fresh anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we pray that you will bless the fathers of this house, the shepherd of this house, in the name of Jesus, a good father. I pray God.
said, I can't pray you, but hallelujah. I'm glad to let bless the Lord. Okay.